Greetings and welcome to my review of Ubuntu Linux as a software developer's platform. So I've been using Linux for about six years now, and one of the reasons why I initially got into it is that I would eventually become a developer. It took me about six years to do that, and uh, this is actually, I think, a very common phenomenon that I have seen amongst Linux users, such as myself, who are we consider them fairly advanced. They can hop around in the terminal, they can really get anything done, they understand how to make basic bash scripts, uh, nothing in regards to as running software on the actual operating system is a challenge to them. The hurdle though comes when they actually try to get into software development. And I've talked to a lot of developers, uh, I shouldn't say developers, a lot of Linux users who've attempted to get into development and just have not been able to jump over the hurdle and believe me it is a large hurdle to jump over but once you get over it it's um, it's more or less smooth sailing from there so this video will be very interesting to anyone uh, as well who is interested in learning how to hop how to jump over that hurdle so uh, please join me So the first thing we're going to look at is the availability of different IDEs on Ubuntu. So I went ahead and I searched IDE in the Ubuntu Software Center. And there's quite a few here, and there's actually quite a few I have not seen before. Uh, last time I really looked through all of these uh, was probably about a year ago, but I haven't seen uh, Ninja IDE. I've seen Code Blocks, I've seen Arduino. But I've tried most of these, and the ones I really settled on are Qt Creator, which is a very powerful tool. Probably, probably the, I would say the best C++ uh, integrated development environment on Ubuntu. And Genie, which I use for pretty much everything else. And there's a real particular reason why I actually like both of these. Uh, for one, uh, Qt Creator is part of the Ubuntu SDK. So, if you search Ubuntu SDK, uh, you will actually, it's interesting they actually just change your icon here. It used to be the old uh, Qt Creator. Um, the Ubuntu SDK uh, does include Qt Creator, so as you can see right there. And if we just run this, And there we go. It starts up quite quickly. It's a very, very powerful uh, integrated development environment, and I use it for every project, um, for anything from C++ to Qt, and I'm a little bit surprised. It actually has a little bit of Python in here right now, so I'm going to have to actually take a look at that, because that's very interesting. I didn't realize that they had Python uh, support. Uh, but otherwise, what I actually usually use, other than that, is Genie. Now, as you can see here, I actually also have a mono development uh, uh, window open, but this is actually kind of a joke, and we'll get into that in the next, the next part. So the reason why mono develop is a bit of a joke is because the only reason why I downloaded it is to show what a improperly integrated program on Ubuntu looks like. So the first thing that you will notice on uh, mono develop as it compares to Genie here is that this menu bar is situated right under the title bar, whereas in Genie the menu bar is situated up here. Now. This is important for two reasons. The first reason is because in the age of 16 by 9 uh, widescreen laptop screens, televisions, computer screens, what have you, vertical space has become much more important. And this is probably the reason why the team at Canonical, when they were designing Unity, chose to put their start bar on the side here. Because you need to have a lot more space vertical space, especially if you're editing documents, than you used to with the, old, uh, with the older computers. Uh, this is especially uh, relevant if you're editing photos on something like GIMP. You see how much real estate I have here, right? If this is Windows, I might have the title bar down here. I might have another 
title bar up here. And I'm sure they would have a bunch of useless widgets in here too. And I'd really lose a lot of my ability to edit the photo with ease or what have you. Again, every pixel counts. The second reason, and this is the main reason why I recommend Ubuntu as a developer's platform, is because when you have the menu command down here, this is actually an indicator that this is not integrated into the HUD. And the HUD is an extremely powerful, um, how should I say this? It, it, it improves your workflow by leaps and bounds once you get once you start you know getting used to it right and what the HUD is if you look over here whenever I press alt I can actually search through the uh, the menu commands here and then I can I can just execute them right so I know what some people are probably saying they're probably saying well that's why we have keyboard shortcuts well let's go through that Let's try to open up a new file. So let me try to use the keyboard shortcut. So that's probably Control N. That's just what I'm assuming. I don't know. Okay. So I was right. So you're right. A keyboard shortcut does exist. I don't need to go like this. I could do that, but it's not necessary in that case. And I was able to guess it. Um, however, let's start actually writing a program here. So let's write an extremely complicated Python program. A classic. Well, as you can see here, there's no syntax highlighting applied here. So if I want to enable syntax highlighting, well, let's, let's try to see if there is a keyboard shortcut for that. So because this is a Python program, I would want Python uh, syntax highlighting. So let's try Control P. Nope. Control Alt P. Nope. Control Shift P. Nope. Control Alt Shift P. Nope. Control. I was. I was. Control Super P. Nope. Control Alt P. Nope. Nothing's worked. So, ordinarily on another distribution, I can't find the shortcut key. Probably one doesn't even exist because all the shortcut keys have to actually be programmed in. And there's just so many different programming languages out there that, you know, why bother? Um, so normally I would actually have to search through this, and I would actually, I actually have to find the syntax highlighting mini command here. So because I've been through this a few times before, I actually know where to look. It's actually under document, set file type. Uh, is it under programming languages? No. Is it under scripting languages? Uh, yep, there it is. So that says Python source file, and I can click that, and voila, it works. No? Fantastic. But again, uh, for someone who's just getting used to Genie, uh, who's never used a program before, how are they supposed to know that? And frankly, it's still, you know, that's still quite a few extra steps to go uh, to actually go through this and choose Python, right? You have to go through three different menus, and you have to uh, search through all of them until you find the right choice. Whereas if I merely did this, let's first let's uh, print hello world again. On Ubuntu, all I need to do is go alt, and well, I want syntax highlighting, so I want it for Python, so maybe I'll type Python, see where that gets me. Oh, look at that. Python, source file, document, set file type, scripting languages. That's exactly what I want. Enter. Now, that is a lot easier than uh, going through the many commands. And once you really get used to that, that extremely improves your workflow. Let me give you a better example. Let's go to the GIMP here. So the GIMP, um, the GIMP is a is a program that is n n like notorious for just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of many commands here or probably at least, you know, 200 or something like that. I shouldn't say hundreds and hundreds, but 200. <laughs> That's probably a fair guesstimate. So there's just no way. And if you actually look at all of these, there's not even, uh, you know, there's not even shortcuts for like a lot of these, uh, especially in filters, right? So, um, and it doesn't just go down to many commands. It actually applies to things such as, uh, one of my favorite features, opening up recent documents. Well, in GIMP, 
um, there's no real intuitive shortcut key for opening up real uh, recent uh, documents. You can go Control One. Okay, so Control One, you know, but that doesn't really say like this document is called example.xcf. That doesn't Control One has no connection to the file example.xcf, and it might not even be the one I'm actually looking for. So let's just close that. Uh, control C, no, Control. Of course, it would be Control C. Control W. Okay, Control W. That closed it. So if I actually really wanted to open it, <laughs> if I wanted to open, it, I could just go Alt, and I wouldn't have to go Open Recent. As that really wouldn't work. I mean, that would work in this case. But what I could actually just do is I could just type the file name. So in this case, I made it an example. I could just type exa, press enter, and there you go. Now let's say I want to do some really beautiful work on this. I want to oilify this. All right, let's give it another try. So let's try the keyboard shortcut first. Is it Control O? No, nope, Control O is open. Is it Control A? Alt O. Control Alt O. It, alt O is also open. Control Super O. Super Alt O. Super. Ugh. None of these are working. <laughs> so again, what I would have to do on a, another operating system, such as uh, KDE or GNOME or XFCE, is I would have to go here. I have to go tools, filters. Um, I have to go through all of these. Where is Oilify? Uh, is that it? under here? No, I. Ugh. There's just so many different files here. There's so many different options here that I really am having a hard time finding it. And when in reality, on Ubuntu, on using the HUD, I could just go like this. There we go. That is an incredible time saver. And people really, uh, really do not give Unity credit for how powerful that tool is. So, yeah. I want to end the video off in giving some advice to Linux users who have been wanting to take the plunge into programming, but have never actually really gone over that hump. Uh, it's a difficult hump to get over. And uh, if anyone's familiar with the Linux Action Show uh, or with Jupiter Broadcasting, the owner of that podcast, Chris Fisher, I remember listening to him on Coder Radio one time, and he was lamenting that he thinks that some people just have the programming gene and other people don't. Like some people just have the mind it takes to program and a person like him will just never be able to attain that because for whatever reason, uh, the most he will ever be able to accomplish is that he might be able to do a few bash scripts or something like that. I'd like to say that I think he's wrong. I think it's just such a fantastic hurdle to get over, especially if, you, especially if you're self-taught. I was self-taught. Such a fantastic hurdle to get over. Um, but once you do that, you can start stepping into it. Uh, and I can certainly say that if you start with C++, you're going to give up. If you start with Python, though, I think that's very pragmatic, uh, a lot of fun. So as you actually see here, I have the Python challenge here. Uh, one thing that I would advise, and this is actually something I'm doing right now, I uh, recently re-picked up Python, and I'm going to actually try to get through all 33 levels of, Python, of the Python challenge. And the Python challenge is a bunch of riddles that you're supposed to use Python to solve. And I've had a few attempts at this before. I think I got to level 4 uh, back in like 2011. Um, I remember everything... Everything that I learned from there uh, really stuck with me, and it was just so much fun. But I can never really keep at it because you just lose interest so far. This time, I've actually gone up to level eight, and I'll share with you my secret. And I think a lot of people would really benefit from this. Uh, this would really help you get into programming. It makes it a lot of fun. Uh, the thing that you want to do is you want to go to IRC, and you want to get a bunch of people together who also want to do the Python challenge. So you might want to go to slash join here. I guess there we go. Nope. What am I doing? Learn Python. There we go. 
So learn Python. If you go in here and you ask a bunch of people around here and say, hey, does anyone, anyone want to do the Python challenge with me? You, I'm sure you're going to get quite a few people uh, who will want to join you. Um, and yeah, and one thing that I would suggest that you can do with that is that you can actually use a collaborative uh, terminal here where you actually can, uh, just like in Google Docs, how you can edit a, a document at the same time, you can actually do that with code here uh, too. So codebunk.com. Um, going through Python again, I've, I've greatly uh, expanded my knowledge on Python and my experience of programming, and I really just recommend that. I was already, you know, a programmer before this. Again, like, there's so much uh, that you can uh, learn from that. So that's my first piece of advice. And my second piece of advice is, well, I think you should download the Ubuntu SDK. Because the Ubuntu SDK is really what you need as a base. Like, this is really good industry standard. If you know how to develop in C++, and you know how to develop a GUI front end using Qt, which is extremely powerful, probably the best GUI front end uh, out there, period, bar none. Uh, you're pretty much set up. Uh, you'll probably be able to find a job anywhere. So um, now, I, I can tell you from experience, getting into Qt and getting into C++ is a lot harder than getting into uh, Python. Python is much better to start with. Um, C++, um, I've had people tell me that they use C++, but they use C++, but they think that it should die. And in many cases, I actually kind of agree with them because, oh man, you know, um, I guess to put it in a little bit of perspective, the developer of C++, he said uh, when commenting on C, because C++ is an extension of C, C++ is basically C with classes, so C object-oriented programming. Uh, he said, in C, it used to be very, or sorry, in C, it used to be very easy to shoot yourself in the foot. In C++, it's more difficult. But when you shoot yourself in the foot, you blow your entire leg off. And that's very true. Uh, if you, it's sort of like painting yourself in the corner. Uh, you can do that in C++. And if you structure your program wrong or you mess up something, you're just going to bang your head against the wall and it's just going to be really annoying. You've shot your entire leg off. You just do not know. Ugh, it's, it's frustrating. So, um, that being said, C++ is one of those languages that if you learn it, you're going to get really good at programming. Now, my third piece of advice is, um, actually, I should just demo QT for a second here. This is a program that I made. And I'll just show you the power of this GUI interface. Look at that. I can dock it here. I can tab it. I can close it. I can go to here. I can open it again. Just fantastic. Start a two-player game. Uh, missing. There we go. Stack. Oh, look. Buy some colonies. Anyways. <laughs> Very powerful uh, GUI, uh, GUI. So uh, that's that comes with the Ubuntu SDK. Download it, use it, learn it. It's very difficult to use at first, but once you get into it, it's great. And thankfully, it also works with the HUD. So uh, that's great too. So um, a third piece of advice is choose a language to love for each type of language out there. One thing I'm really learning right now is GNU APL. And I would really recommend looking into APL because it really forces you to think uh, differently because APL stands for a programming language. It's a very old language, uh, very archaic. Uh, it was designed using a very classical structure of logic. Uh, so it uses logic symbols. Uh, if you've ever done economics or that sort of thing, uh, at least I should say the the Austrian economics, but more of the mathematical economics. Um, uh, they all have equations and very complex uh, symbol, uh, symbols there. And obviously, this is in mathematics too. Um, and you'll see, uh, you'll see uh, uh, symbols like this. This is the exact symbols that they use in APL. And 
what would take you maybe a thousand lines of code to do in Java, you could do in 10 lines of code in, uh, in APL. It's not very intuitive to look at, but man oh man, it is such a powerful language. And I'll, I'll just give the example of why it's useful to learn. Uh, in C++, um, you see this. Uh, C++ actually uses a tilde. And a tilde means not. Sort of like, it's like a negation, right? Uh, in classical symbolic uh, deductive logic, uh, it also means not. It's also a negation, right? So you know, if you learn EPL, you understand that, oh, C++, or actually I should say C, C was influenced by someone who was uh, well-versed in logic. That's why they use tilde to mean not. And that sort of things, and, you know, ampersand, that stands for and, and uh, this stands for therefore. Um, and actually, I would say that APL is actually probably, I've never done circuit board uh, programming, but it's our uh, population, but uh, it's also probably really useful for uh, circuit boards as well, because uh, you learn how to do logic gates in this, and logic gates are something that are very fun to do. So, um, by the way, this is just something that I've been writing, uh, I tutor economics time to time, and this is some curriculum that I've been writing for it. So, um, you know, anything else? Oh yeah, for a database, uh, this is just my own recommendation. Uh, if you want to think long term, I'd recommend learning Postgres SQL. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's just one of those funny things that nobody knows how to pronounce. But um, there's a bunch of different SQL languages out there. You're probably familiar with uh, MySQL. Um, that's probably the most famous one. Uh, MySQL is characterized by something that's very easy to set up. Uh, PostgreSQL is more of a database that has good long-term viability. Uh, when I was initially researching what I should uh, look into, people I got the I got the indication that uh, people ran into barriers once their databases became 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 so large uh, that. <laughs> lack of a better way to describe this, my SQL simply just wasn't able to handle it, and they eventually switched to Postgre PostgreSQL uh, later on. So, uh, learning PostgreSQL and using that as a base for all databases, I think, would be probably the most pragmatic uh, approach to database creation. Um, oh yeah, and then some. Yeah, this. I guess I'll leave this as my final, um, my final piece of advice. Uh, and I, I say this is probably the first thing that you should do. Get yourself a Launchpad or a GitHub account. I personally use Launchpad. Uh, Launchpad versus GitHub. All right, so first I should say what these do. These are SCMs. These are source control, uh, source control management um, websites or whatever. So basically you upload your code uh, onto these and you know if your computer falls into the ocean, it will be on the cloud, it will be on the internet. Uh, other people can pull code from you. Um, something very useful to, uh, to learn. So I'm using Launchpad. Launchpad is uh, created by Canonical. I love all the Bintu products or the Canonical products, so I just stick with that. It's kind of easier for me. Um, GitHub is the other one that's really big. Um, yeah, you can also use, um, what's it called, Subversion. I don't think many people are using that anymore because that's, uh, if I recall, a single branch. I never use Subversion myself, but that you can also hold school there. Um, I guess the main difference you should know between Launchpad and GitHub is that Launchpad, uh, you have to pay to host uh, proprietary uh, software projects on here. On GitHub, you can do it for free. So GitHub has free hosting. Uh, Launchpad uh, does not. Launchpad, you can... Uh, host all the open source projects you want, and considering only develop open source software, that's a okay with me. So, um, I'd recommend getting this set up as quickly as possible. Uh, you learn about open P PGP keys, uh, SSH keys. These are basically how you're going to sign your code, uh, and knowing how to get code uploaded and how to share code with other people is just a very useful skill to useful skill to learn and the sooner you get yourself an account here the sooner you can really start programming and you know start making a name for yourself so I'd highly recommend to do that so 
Um, yeah, so this has been my review of Ubuntu as a developer's platform. I highly recommend it. I, again, I'd like to stress that the best thing about Ubuntu that it has advantage over all the other desktop environments out there, I said operating systems before, but it really meant uh, desktop environments, is that it has the HUD. You can actually run programs from here. It just makes it so fantastic, and Ubuntu is such a uh, well-used, already-used uh, platform already. I just think the absolute world, world of it. So, uh, again, thanks for tuning in, and uh, good luck in your future endeavors.